be good to go, Tina. Oh, except that you've you've hit mute. Thanks, Ron. Sorry, with all those tech issues, I'm happy. I do have left my details at the end, well, the last slide. So if anybody does have a question and we do happen to miss it, happy for them to email me or ring me um, at the end if they like. Um, Hi everyone, my name is Tina King and I'm a proud Awabika woman um, on my father's side um, and I'm the Koori Services Coordinator for the Shepherd and Children's Court um, and the very, very, very proud to be able to participate in the Marin Malagambu Court. So um, today, firstly, um, I'd like to um, do an acknowledgement and thanks Bron for doing yours. I'm just going to back yours up. Um, so I would like to acknowledge and pay my respects to those two people of the lands in which we all are privileged to meet on today. I wish to recognise our ancestors and elders who have shown the strength and resilience to hold to our cultural practice, knowledge, law and spirituality in order to continue our traditions through generations despite the difficulties faced. I wish to acknowledge the stolen generations as they remind us of a, a horrific practice brought about by colonization, the mothers and the aunties that feel continued heartache and the millions of tears that flowed for babies and young ones who never returned home, to the broken fathers and uncles who felt unable to protect their families and to the families who continue to suffer from the past government policy. We acknowledge the, these traumatic impacts. I would also like to acknowledge those that walk alongside our community, namely the allies, who share the journey to create a be better tomorrow for our children and families. In this journey we walk together, we will share a better understanding of Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander culture, and we will develop an enriched understanding of the oldest living culture in the world. Sorry. Oh, yes, I forgot to move the slide across. So today we're talking um, about Maranala Gumbu um, and just a bit of a background on, on Maranala Gumbu. Um, it's a, it, Maranala Gumbu is a Kuru family hearing day held in the family division of the Children's Court of Victoria. The need for an Aboriginal family division court was raised at an Aboriginal justice forum in March, 2009. In 2012, a recommendation was made by the Protecting Victoria's Vulnerable Children Inquiry for the establishment of a pilot Koori list in the Family Division of the Children's Court of Victoria. This hearing day was established as an innovative response to the overrepresentation of Aboriginal children and families in the child protection system in Victoria. In 2016, the Children's Court of Bro in Broadmeadows became the very first Australian court to establish a Koori Family Hearing Day known as Maranala Gumbu. In short, we refer to it as MNG. This, um, this name was provided to the Children's Court of Victoria by the Wurundjeri Land Council, meaning we are one, and aims to improve outcomes for Aboriginal children and their families involved in the child protection proceedings by providing a culturally appropriate post process to assist in the division um, decision-making Following an independent, sorry, following an independent um, evaluation in 2019, the Children's Court of Victoria received funding under the Australian uh, Aboriginal Justice Agreement for a limited expansion of MNG to a rural location. Fast forward to 2021, MNG was expanded to Shepparton um, in the Shepparton Children's Court and commenced in. <laughs> Um, sorry, um, and commence sitting in the, on the 4th of February 2021. Since this time in Shepparton, nearly 400 families and children have participated in the MNG process and over, it, with over 50 sitting days. Shepparton Maranala Gumbu sits fortnightly and averages around 11 families per listing day. With 71% of... Um, so, sorry, with 71% of families attending the proceedings, MNG continues to aim to improve adherence to the Aboriginal Child Placement Principle set out in the Children, Youth and Families Act 2005. So a little bit about the Aboriginal Child Placement Principles that's set out in the Act. Um, so basically, um, they outline a number of steps um, 
that child protection must follow in removing Aboriginal children from parental care when this has to happen or is unfortunately having to happen. The children um, as a priority wherever possible must be placed within the Aboriginal extended family or relatives. Um, and um, where this is not possible, other extended family or relatives must be explored. Um, and if after, unfortunately, there's no available family for the placement of the child, um, with consultation of an Aboriginal agency, placement um, must can be placed with a non-Aboriginal um, family, uh, cloaks within close proximity, and then um, uh, possibly mainstream listings as uh, families, um, but supported strongly by um, Aboriginal organisations. So MNG also encouraged the um, completion of cultural support plans. Um, these are developed between child protection and an allocated Aboriginal organisation. And in Shepparton, we, um, this is Rumbalara Aboriginal Co Cooperative, um, and it's completed for all children who are in out-of-home care. Cultural support plans aim to support in providing a story and guidance for the child and young person and their carer to ensure children remain connected to their family and community. We recognise the need um, to support a family-centred holistic approach that provides a therapeutic and self-determining process and keeps our children connected to culture, country and ensures improved outcomes for families. Um, some of the... Some of the Koori family centered approaches that we use within MNG, um, and we, we demonstrate a deep commitment of Aboriginal self-determination through changes and traditional mainstream court settings. So we, we vary a lot differently from, from the mainstream court setting. So um, I'll give you some examples of that um, as we go through. Um, and so um, our setup, our courtroom setup and functioning um, and innovative approaches enables the court to be more welcoming and a culturally safe place for families. MNG, the MNG program models two key components, which are career centred and family centred and promotes therapeutic justice. The roles within uh, MNG are designed um, designated positions and are undertaken by Aboriginal staff. Uh, central to MNG models is the adapted courtroom, and I'll, we have some photos later on in a few of the slides. Um, culturally affirming environment. Um, we, so we have um, we feature possum skin cloak. We have um, a number of artworks displayed around our courtroom, and we um, undertake an acknowledgement to country, or the magistrate undertakes an acknowledgement to country at every sitting. Um, we are a bit more flexible than the, the mainstream listing. And, and like I mentioned earlier, we, we have a, like a maximum of, of 11 families in per day, um, but we also um, allow some flexibility uh, with, the, with the matters on how they run. And we include extended family and children are also welcome to attend. So we, um, we all sit around the bar table. Um, again, there'll be some photos a little bit later on. Uh, we all sit around the bar table and the magistrate will speak directly um, to the parties, um, the parties being the parents um, and extended family. Um, and then uh, we explain the process in simple terms and encourage the parents through respectful um, discussions and strength-based conversations. And we praise the recognition and the process. Maranal Gumbu seeks a more effective and culturally appropriate and just response for Kuri families through the court process and enables greater participation of family members and culturally informed decision making. Sorry, it's all right, it's skipped into the next slide. Um, <laughs> The, the MNG process um, prior to like um, like a mentor day. So this is kind of my role and what we kind of do um, and the team's role that sit around us and what we do prior to a mention day. So um, we will contact families prior to the mention day um, and they're contacted by one of the Aboriginal staff and we encourage their attendance um, and we encourage and ask for 
um, their guidance on who, who they may wish to come, um, that being services or extended family in which they um, want to come. And we explain the adapted court setting and the changes that we've made um, in particular to Shepherd and, and Broadmeadows um, and how they will be encouraged to speak um, and, and speak to the magistrate directly and, and trying to make it so they, they're wanting to come and fight for their children, especially like families we've had that may have been in the um, program in, in the court sitting previously and not had the experience of MNG and the support around MNG. So, um, so we explain that and, and we encourage them. We will support um, if they need legal representation and we act as key liaisons between um, query families and child protection. Um, we might meet them at the door um, or meet them up in the foyer before going into court and try to have a yarn with them before going in. Um, so on court day as well, we invite, um, we invite the families to sit around the bar table um, and we encourage family members to come up to the bar table, which at times can be quite daunting for these family members. However, once we get them up there, we're, you know, the, the conversation tends to flow and we find that we achieve better outcomes, better problem, problem solving, better conversation with families um, in, that, in that proceeding and that process. The court environment itself is less formal than a mainstream court. Um, like I, I acknowledged before, we, we the magistrate will provide acknowledgement to country um, and with specific recognition of ongoing intergenerational traumas of the stolen generation. And, and that's conducted prior to every family attending. Um, and mentions, um, we schedule our mentions for like a 30 minute interview, interval, sorry, um, and allow time that's needed for families um, that are sitting there. We can problem solve, case manage, provide a bit more um, like uh, with families with, you know, what to do between this, this adjournment or the next adjournment and, and, and things like that. So a lot more discussion can happen within the 30 minutes as opposed to a mainstream sitting, which um, sometimes you might only get maybe 10 minutes in, in the courtroom. So, um, so and, and this um, process allows for the less need or less likely need for hearings to become contested um, and provides better outcomes um, for families who can fully participate um, in the hearing so their voices are heard. Um, so at times their matters are stood down um, so we can, so discussions, further discussions can happen and then they're brought back in. And, and this is done um, in the best interest of the children and the families to um, reduce the likelihood of having to um, come back if matters can be finalised. We have um, several culturally appropriate services that attend um, each of the mentioned days in Shepparton and provide knowledge on available services and um, within the local organisations. So um, we have VACA who attends and they, um, they are the Victorian Aboriginal Child Care Agency and that's a statewide Aboriginal um, community tr controlled organisation. And one of their programs is the ACCESS program and the ACCESS program provides um, a service that um, provides advice to, to the child protection about um, all Aboriginal children um, within the child protection system. And they um, and we've also we also have um, a number of Rumbalara staff who attend the court, um, and they uh, they provide us with uh, referral pathways and pathways to placements if required. Um, and so we're always very keen, and we love having them there. Um, they also provide cultural support around case plans, um, cultural support plans, and AFLDMs. So. Marinella Gumbu provides a, like a case management um, process um, and it plays an integral part in running the, of, of our family's matters. As noted um, prior to the Koori court staff, um, myself and the Koori family support officer are both Aboriginal and we support, support families through, through court. Um, we have a dedicated docketed magistrate for our families. Um, so that allows um, families to build relationships and families that the matters attract better by a, a, the one specific docketed magistrate. We have um, a dedicated child protection practitioner um, who's a practice lead 
and they develop interface between child protection and the court and support staff ensuring matters progress through the court. So in between um, the adjournment periods, um, myself and um, it might be um, the VACA staff and the Rumbalara staff um, might meet with the family and we try and get things sorted in between the adjournment periods to try and push the, the matter in whichever way it goes um, through the court process. So families are more likely, obviously, to follow court directions and, and orders if, if they are part of the process. So, um, so we, we keep track of that, obviously, with, um, and, and hold people to account when it comes back to court. So that's everybody at the table that sits and says, I'm going to do something. We hold them to account. A case management approach um, leads through the partnership of um, myself and, and the family service coordinator, the practice leads. As I said before, um, it's, we wrap around the holistic supports to be able to progress this. So this is our adapted court setting, or this is sort of one half. And as you can see, that's the Shepparton courtroom. And then we have the Broadmeadows court. Um, obviously, very different courts, but um, very similar approaches. Um, so in Shepparton, we have this adapted court setting. So the specially designed oval bar table that sits in the center. Um, created by local craftspeople, so um, the people that designed the actual table, they're, they're, they're a shepherd and business, um, and the Aboriginal artist um, who's burnt, um, I don't know how good your screens are, but the, the actual bar table has actually got um, wood burnings on there, um, and that's done by Uncle Kevin Atkinson, and so he's designed the beautiful design on the table, um, and it's very, like, very tangible, so it's very like everybody touches it. You can touch the burning and we'll often see family touch the burning or the possum skin. Um, so the possum skin itself, it was created by um, Koori children and young people from the region and features in the centre of our table on court day. A coolerman with fresh gum leaves sits in the middle of the bar table and families are encouraged to feel the possum skin for comfort to support them in easing nerves and tension um, throughout the process. The design of the courtroom is guided by um, Aboriginal elders and respected persons within our MNG um, steering committee. Um, so they've kind of shown us what they think we should do and how we should do it. And um, so they've been amazing in, in being able to provide us that guidance. Everyone involved in the hearing sits around these bar tables, including the magistrate. Um, her seats in the, the second one, you can see they'll sit, generally sit in the center of the table. And everybody um, present is invited to introduce themselves at the start of a, at a, at a, of a mention um, and their connection and in, in, include their connection to the families. Um, this, this layout we feel in, encourages and enables um, greater participation for the families and is culturally informed in the decision making. Uh, I have a quote from one of our elders from the steering committee. We asked her to come and view um, the court proceedings um, and provide us with some feedback on how she feels we, we can improve. And so Aunty Pam Pedersen came um, and viewed the court and from her experience of entering the courtroom for the first time and with her permission, she states, when entering the courtroom, it provides a sense of cultural safety and warmth. So I was very pleased that... Um, she was able to tell us that that's how she felt on, at that particular moment was that she didn't feel unnerved by a courtroom, um, which is very unique, I suppose. So in this particular side, that's another piece, um, sorry, on the left, um, called the meeting place. That sits on the opposite side of our courtroom. So it's still in our courtroom, but on the opposite side of the table. Um, and this piece um, was... Um, completed as a collaboration between uh, the courts and KL Arts undertook a, um, a, a couple of uh, days where we, we funded some programs and the children were able to come and immerse themselves in cultural art and activities and, and such. Um, 
And then as a part of that, um, we were able to collect a number of pieces um, to excess of what was in there. And we were able to create this piece that sits on, on the wall. And the size of this photo does not do it justice. was quite a large piece. And that's a bit of a closer image of our possum skin. And as you can see underneath the possum skin cloak, it is actually all painted up. Um, and there's a nice big shield underneath and it's absolutely stunning underneath. So there's a good view. And then as you can see, there's the cooler men with the gum leaves as well. Tina, can I just interrupt for half a second? Of course. Um, we've had um, some feedback that what they're seeing on the screen is what you can see on the screen with the you two slides and the notes. Okay. Um, can you have a look at your display settings? Because I can't fix it from my end. Sure. I've got two. I've got duplicate slideshow or swap presenter slideshow. So um, try down the bottom where there's the other icons. Okay. Um, which one would you like me to press? Give it a go and see what happens. We'll see what the okay. feedback is. Nope, that's not it. Okay. Uh, nope, that's not it. Black or unblack slideshow. Nope, that's not it. <laughs> okay, no worries. You keep going and I will see if I can problem solve it. Okay. Yep. That's okay. You just keep going and I'll see what I can do. Okay. My apologies, everybody, for that. Um, so, oh, yeah. um, so this slide here um, is an indicator. So unfortunately, we all too often have seen children remain in the care um, of non-Aboriginal placements and disconnected from their culture and lands and Aboriginal family, elders, siblings, community. Um, and then obviously this in turn has the possibility of leading to, you know, cycles of stolen generation, increases the likelihood of children becoming um, in connection with the criminal justice system. So um, as part of the intervention for this, um, an example within Shepparton um, is like the early identification of children and families um, within the court process. And it's imperative to ensuring that the Aboriginal child placement principles are adhered to um, and ensures discussion can occur um, if required around cultural supports to ensure the connection for these children is maintained um, from the beginning of the court process and ensures families are provided with a culturally appropriate service throughout. Um, and then obviously, it. it, it can support in, in families and more likely to, for them to engage um, throughout the actual court proceedings as well. So this here, this slide here is an example um, of the Shepparton Family Division and um, uh, prior to my appointment is the 2018-2019. And so um, there was an expected number of 26% of the listings were Aboriginal. Um, and then, so that's seen on the, the left-hand side of my slide, if, if that helps. And then since becoming employed, um, the data collection has now improved and showing that Aboriginal families actually represent 46.9% of the Shepherd and Children's Court. So it's quite a large jump um, from the identification of Aboriginal families. So um, initially when we did start MNG here in Shepparton, we actually commenced every three weeks um, because of the stats saying it was 26 and now we do run fortnightly. Um, but it's also unfortunately highlighting that almost 50% of the, the listing is Aboriginal children coming through the courts, um, which is quite a high number. And, um, and you know, and, and reasons why MNG is quite imperative within our region. Um, so some of the some of the um, process within MNG, I've probably gone over a couple of them already, um, but how they separate from a mainstream listing day with MNG. So the listing structure, obviously, as noted before, was um, it's 11 families per day. We average um, maybe 12, um, between eight and 12 families. Um, this is a smaller listing. 
um, and allowing for improved discussions. A mainstream listing days can average around 35 matters. So quite um, number-wise, it's quite a, a massive um, thing, but um, with the 11 families a day, we can quite um, easily get through really good discussions and, and make things move forward. We don't hear contest hearings um, and we don't hear submissions within the Shepherd and MNG. Um, and this, this reduces the adversarial approach to the proceedings um, and uh, improves the case management. <laughs> so um, MNG tends to reduce the likelihood of matters going to final hearings or contests. And that's again, through the case management process. It reduces, um, sorry, the multi-jurisdictional team. So myself, um, the family support worker, the child protection practice lead, the, the legal reps, the CPLOs, all participating, all provide um, like influence to the process. Um, and that allows um, for us to be able to get improved outcomes. Um, obviously mainstream days don't tend to have that um, case management case management process so therefore it um, yeah things tend to get a little bit laggy sometimes um, times are allocated to each of our families on the mentioned days and that allows for families to be able to say come in at 10 o'clock and their matters heard at a particular time so we run every half an hour um, so families might be like uh, they mentioned might be at 11 o'clock and so they tend to come in just before 11 o'clock and their matter can be heard straight away and then they can hug off and do the rest of the things they, they normally do. So we try and navigate around, you know, families that have got kids in their care. Um, so we try not to put their matters on at three o'clock in the afternoon where we know they're gonna be at pick up. So we try really hard to, to manage through that. Um, so they're not hanging around all day waiting for their, um, matters to be heard on MNG days. Um, our families are encouraged to um, uh, voice their concerns instead of relying on, on their legal reps to do so, and they tend to articulate themselves very well. Um, and magistrates, as noted before, magistrates will ask the clients directly um, about their family and how they're going and, and what things need to be improved, and, and they respond accordingly, obviously. Um, and uh, and we do we identify our families to ensure that we can get um, families within the court within the MNG quite quickly. We adhere to the placement principles and and we try to use them appropriate. Well, they are used appropriately, and they're more inclined to be um, directed to be used appropriately. Um, during the court process, suggestions are made for career support services and cultural supports, um, and obviously Rumbalara are there to provide referral pathways. Um, discussions will often occur with staff within the room around what is available. We often you know, refer to maybe Dadi Munwaro, um, and so we can sign the men up or the you know the families up right then at the front of the court, and we get them um, the referral in as soon as possible. Um, consultation with Lakijika occurs um, throughout the proceedings as well. Um, so their voice within the room is, is heard quite strongly. Um, so we, we also support um, our staff in uh, the Shepparton Court um, in undertaking um, uh, cultural competency. Um, we often undertake events within the court um, to ensure our staff within the court um, uh, like can speak with Aboriginal people and to, at minimum and, and support Aboriginal families as they come through. We apply the therapeutic justice um, principles um, in, a, in, in the Koori court um, and led by Koori people. So that's um, another positive that we come. We encourage participation of parents, children, extended families, support services for families, and they're all encouraged to attend. And they do come and they, uh, even the services, they come and they'll voice what's going on for the family. So um, it's all a very holistic approach. It's a very slowed down approach to the mainstreams process. Um, so yeah, all combined, we make, um, 
make it a more approachable and non-adversarial process for our, our families and provide better outcomes for children. Um, so see, uh, uh, sorry, on the slide that's just here is the um, a number of comments made from the evaluation by families that attended um, the Maranala Gumbu Courts. Um, so in 2019, we commissioned that independent evaluation um, and then, and how it was impacting, how the Maranala Gumbu process was impacting families. The evaluation saw over 30 um, Koori adults and young people interviewed, as well as 30 people from other programs who were involved in the MNG process. And this provided an in-depth evaluation of the, um, of the impacts MNG was having. So the evaluation found that um, MNG was providing a more effective and culturally appropriate and just response for Koori families through a more culturally appropriate court process, successfully encouraging Aboriginal uh, people to feel welcome, heard and empowered. Koori families are more likely to attend the court MNG, sorry, attend court at MNG and are more likely to follow court orders due to the support of the magistrate and the Koori staff. The department um, is more accountable to magistrates and the court process in MNG. There is a greater compliance with the Aboriginal child placement principle and also early indicators that more family are staying together and having their children return to their care. And um, we do have copies of the um, evaluation if everybody, anybody's interested. I do have some paper-based copies in the office if you are paper-based people. Um, and that's the website or that's the link that you can go to um, to um, get a copy. And my contact details are there if anybody is interested in any more information. Thank you all for listening to me today. And I apologize for all the tech issues that have gone on. Hi, everybody. Thanks, no, no, that's all good. Um, if anyone's got any questions, throw them in the Q&A box. Um, the other thing I just ask, I do apologise for the problems with the screen. I, I now understand from feedback that um, it's all appeared quite small. So I apologise for that. I don't know what happened. Um, but do feel free to throw some questions at Tina. She's, she's here. So... <laughs> Just give them a couple of minutes to, if they want to type anything. Tina, would you mind, because the screen was quite small, would you mind sharing your phone number again verbally so that, uh, just nice and slow, in case anyone that wanted to contact you didn't have it. Of course. Yep. Um, my number is 0438 029 935. Okay. Thanks so much. And I can see that a couple of people are heading off and I haven't got any questions through. So I'm going to assume you're all comfortable or you'll contact Tina afterwards. Yep. So um, thanks everyone for joining us. And Tina, a special thanks for you because that was brilliant. Oh, thank you. Thank you so much for everybody for taking the time and listening to an amazing program that we have in Shepparton. Thank oh, you. Uh, and uh, it's not a question, but I've got lots of people saying thank you in the Q&A box. So well oh, nice. done. Excellent. Thank you so much. All right. Bye, Bye everybody.